Um, yeah, man. So anyway, I got out here last night, connected through Dallas. We had this friggin' airplane where, uh, you know, you know, the captain gets on. And first of all, I, you know, you get on the planes, they have the intercom on like full blast. And this was the one was like extra full blast. And in the past, I've asked them to turn it down a little bit. And the stewardess always says, yeah, there's nothing we can do. It's like, what do you mean there's nothing we can do? Are you honestly telling me that they installed an intercom on full fucking blast without a knob on it? Is that what you're telling me? What it really is, is they're lawyers. Just in case somebody's hard of hearing, we have to have it up full blast so nobody can sue us. The guy next to me was literally blocking his ears. It was so fucking loud. Um, That's what it's going to take. Some ambulance chaser to say they collapsed my eardrum. So um, anyway, the guy gets on. Just like loud as shit. It's your captain speaking, right? And he's like, uh, we have a mechanical issue. It's not the plane. It's one of our mid-cabin laboratories. I guess it was stinking up the joint. And I don't know what happened, but like I was, you know, listening to the people working at LAX, talking to the uh, the male stewardess guy there. And they were just like, yeah, you know, what do you want us to do about it? And the guy was just like, this is how you talk to us? It was really fucking unprofessional. You know, the, whoever that guy at LAX was, he sounded like a guy who had to go fix a public toilet. <laughs> so maybe it wasn't unprofessional. Maybe it was just normal human behavior. So eventually they got it, they got it done and uh, we had to connect through Dallas and I never sweat that shit whenever they're like, you know, I might miss my connecting flight. It's just like, I know people in Dallas, I'll call up Jeff Sewell, fucking one of my favorite little people in the business. There's Peter Dinklage and then there's Jeff Sewell and uh, I fucking, I would just hang out with him. That's what I was thinking. Then I'll get a rental car and I'll drive across this great nation. I'll go through Texas, Tyler, Texas, home of Earl Campbell, childhood home. And then I'll fucking go through Louisiana, through Mississippi, right in there. I don't give a fuck. Me and Bartnick were riding there. We're like, fuck it. We'll get a fucking rental car. It'll be fine. And because I didn't give a shit, if you believe in the universe... Not only did I make my flight, they changed my gate to being right next door. You know, Dallas is probably the worst one I've ever had to connect in. Um, I really think that they installed the train going the wrong way. Because every time I get there and I have to connect, my connection, say if there's four terminals and, you know, the thing runs counterclockwise, the train, I'm always one terminal to the right. So I have to go through all of the terminals to get, or you can run like a lunatic with your bag. I've never really figured out which one is quicker, but um, yeah, I don't give a fuck anymore. You get to a certain age, you're just too old to run for a plane. And it's just like, all right, either I make it or I'm going to find out what local sports team is playing and I'm going to that game. (laughs) Tell me, what brings you to town? Oh, I missed my connecting flight. And you came out here to a fucking Tuscaloosa Wahoo game? Yes, I did. I don't give a fuck. What division is this? 19? Well, shit, let's get after it. Then you meet people. Next thing you know, you're shooting guns. You, go, you join a hate group. And the next day, you're at Hertz. You act like it never happened anymore. And uh, you get back on your fucking plane. Um, no, I shouldn't say a hate group. Just because we're down south doesn't mean that these white people down here hate anybody else anymore. Oh, shit. I'm going to talk about that tonight on stage. That's a good way to get in with these people from Alabama. Uh, 